Hi and welcome to my channel. Thanks for clicking on this video. It's all about books. Today it's gonna be pretty dark because I'm introducing The Loop by Ben Oliver. So stay tuned if you like dystopias and are a fan of books like Maze Runner. As always, I talk about the facts, the author, I summarize the story, spoiler free of course, and at the end I give you my own personal opinion of this book. But I'm also curious what you think about it, so please write me your impressions in the comment section down below. So let's start. The Loop by Ben Oliver is a dystopian young adult novel for readers from 14 plus. It was published 2020 by Chicken House, has 368 pages and the reading time is approximately 8 hours. Like I mentioned, a similar book is Maze Runner by James Dashner or The Fifth Wave by Rick Yancey. That's what I have about the facts. Let me introduce you to the author. Ben Oliver is a British author. He lives in Bristol, but he's also a comic book artist and he illustrates among others for Marvel comics like The Ultimate X-Men, Church Dread, The Losers, Dark Rain, Hulk. He first started writing when he was seven years old, but then was placed in the lowest reading and writing level at school, which discouraged him, of course, and he stopped writing for the time being. But this only lasted for three years, because then he wrote what I did during my summer holiday. This is an assignment most students have to write after their vacations and I always think this is just to satisfy the curiosity of the teachers. And Ben claimed that he saved the world from the apocalypse and his teacher thought this was great and encouraged him so Ben started writing again. He then became an English teacher himself and when he was 32 he wrote his debut novel The Loop which came out 2020. And the follow-up book The Block is also already out and I will feature that in an upcoming video. This is what I have about the author so let's move on and jump into the story. The story is set in a dystopian future. It's the opposite of utopia. And the social order in these dystopias are dysfunctional, negative, not the way we want it to be. We follow 17-year-old Luca Kane who lives in a Spartan cell in the Loop. It's a prison and he's there for murder. Every day is exactly the same. He can only talk with Happy, an artificial intelligence that regulates the daily routine. There's only one exit per day to his own yard and he can only talk to his cell neighbor through a wall. In this loop, the prisoners are all teenagers because when they turn 18, they are sent to the block, the successory band, and no one returns from the block. The loop is a prison where everyone faces the death penalty unless they extend the expiration and report for what is called deferment, in which case they are sent away on a black train for experimental testing. This deferment lasts about six months. Some become completely disfigured by the experiments, like they get robot eyes, robot arms, many go insane if they haven't already by the regular loop or they simply die. Like I said in this loop, every day is almost mechanically the same as the next. Every meal is served at exactly the same time. Even the rain at night, which starts like a timer, there is a total control via so-called forehead eyes and the artificial intelligence happy can observe everything. But the worst are the so-called energy harvest. It's a daily torture over two hours each, which take all energy 
from the prisoner. Escaping would be futile because the prisoners have an additional noose around their heart which is connected to a trigger. So if a prisoner should muster enough strength to escape, the guard can simply press the trigger and the heart will explode. Moreover, there's a threshold at the exit where the heart also will explode if it's not unlocked. And if a prisoner in the yard tries to escape or does not comply to the rules, there are drones with arrows that trigger a horror trip for several days. People are divided into the modified, who are already genetically optimized in the WOMP, babies by catalog, where everything is improved, like the heart does not exhaust even if they run, and these supermen are higher ranking, usually rich and condescending. Then we have the naturals, they are not modified, but they are naturally beautiful and smart. Then we have the regulars, people who are who they are, with all their flaws, and they are mostly poor. And Luca Kane is one of the regulars, the lowest on the rung. The only joy in Luca's life are the yard walks, the memories that he is shown on a monitor for half an hour at a time. These memories are his own memories from the time in the loop. And Ren. Ren is a modified young guard. She is new and she's very nice because she sneaks books into his cell. And these books keep Luca from going crazy. Then, do you remember the rain? I told you about the one that starts every night at exactly the same time. Well, one day it stops raining and suddenly all the prisoners have to go to the postponement. They are divided into two groups, group A and group B. Group A comes one day before group B and Luca is in group B. The horror spirals out of control when Luca realizes what has become of the Group A prisoners. They are acting completely crazy and trying to kill themselves. Then he hears about the rumor that there's a virus going around outside that turns people into killer machines. And there's talk of war. Before Luca has to go to the postponement, Rena gives him a book and she says, please read the book now. In this book, there's a note and it says, Luca, you absolutely have to get out of here now. That's everything I tell you about the story. Let's move on to my impression. I think the theme of this story is extremely good. It shows the powerlessness of the individual in a totalitarian controlled system. At the same time, with the heartfelt Ren, it shows how much an individual can accomplish. It shows the struggle for humanity in an inhumane environment. It shows the struggle for a sliver of hope that drives the prisoners into deferment instead of agreeing to immediate elimination. It's the description of a class society that isn't that far from our reality. Discrimination because of social status, because of the color of your skin, because of religion, it's nothing new. And the transport of the inmates to the lab in this black train inevitably remind me of one of the blackest times in human history. I like the narrative style of Ben Oliver. He has a very clear language, his sentences are short and it reads easily. And I think just this functional style adds to the ominous and cold feeling of this dystopia. Also, since we hear the story from the first person perspective, we never know much more than the main character and that naturally lets the tension build. It brings a closeness to the character. And because everything takes place in just a few square meters, 
the author has to focus on the main character and I think he did it fantastically. Ben Oliver did a great job of describing this monotony and the psychological changes it brings. At one point, Luca is even happy at the thought that there might be war and the monotony is so great that he looks forward to the rain at exactly two o'clock that brings him a little change. Although the system tries to take the humanity of the prisoners by calling them inmate number 9407 or something, Luca keeps his humanity. He grows on you and you tremble with him. Now I tell you what I didn't like so much. There are a lot of characters and especially at the beginning we know them only by name and some of them sound quite similar and this confused me at times. In the beginning it took me a while to get into the story. I don't know exactly why, maybe it's the monotony that we experience with the protagonist. Some scenes and some actions of the protagonist Luca in the loop I found quite unbelievable, like why doesn't he open the cells of his friends and goes alone into the city. I think this part of the book was too long and wouldn't have needed it. Also some scenes at the end I found quite confusing, but I don't want to give too much away. That's why I stop with my impression at this point. Let's move on to the conclusion. I think this is a really great book for young people. It's a successful mix with many parallels to Maze Runner, The Fifth Wave or The Walking Dead as an example for a series. So. Any fans of those will definitely get their money's worth here as well. It's super exciting, it's gritty, it's gruesome, nothing for the faint-hearted and has a very surprising ending. The theme of the book is not only for teenagers but for adult readers as well and Ben Oliver writes in such a way that man will enjoy reading this book too. This is a book that gives us a glimpse into a frightening future that is not so far-fetched in the imagination. It made me think a lot, are we moving in this direction? How would I behave in this situation? I don't know. The only thing I know is I will definitely read the second book, The Block, and I will talk about that soon. Here we are again. I hope you enjoyed my post. Then subscribe to my channel and leave me a like. Thanks for watching. I really appreciate it. And see you soon in my next video. Bye.